The 747 at Boeing remains one of the most iconic commercial airliners released in the last 60 years. Its role right across our industry as a symbol of advancements is very much clear, and the work going into really producing the first unit will never be forgotten. As part of the legacy it has created, Boeing has throughout its history continued to try and find ways to cement the 747 position as an industry leader, which has been a challenge. Therefore, relevance has been a crucial focus, with this a scene that continues to evolve and airline requirements are changing. As more competition has emerged, Boeing has needed to find ways to combat that. The proposed 747-400 XQLR, or Quiet Long Range, was a development study variant that pushed the boundaries of efficiency, range, and while unsurprisingly based on the name, noise reduction, with a view to appeal to the masses, and obviously their your evolving trends too. Despite its apparent promise, this remains an aircraft that never got past the drawing board. But what was it? Why didn't it launch? And how can it compare to the eventually released 747-8? The premise of the 747-400 XQLR lies in the fact it was a development study, essentially Boeing's response to airlines' desires to have planes that operated quieter without having to, say, sacrifice capacity or range. Boeing's efficiency to the long-haul space was a key focus, and by the turn of the century, this would become one of the most essential pillars of studies undertaken by Boeing. However, before that, there were very early inklings that greater efficiency was going to need to be required. As operating costs were increasing, there was a lot more competition too when airlines wanted security in the aircraft they were purchasing. The 747-400 XQLR was intended to check all those boxes, offering airlines a solution built on the proven success of the 747-400, but with upgrades that would be worthwhile they felt in investing. Central to the XQLR's design was its promise of reduced fuel burn, but doing so with extended range and an operation that would be quieter thanks to technological advancements. Boeing believed the prospective improvements would ensure that the aircraft had a form of visibility in not just traditional markets, now this could range from Europe and North North America, but maybe also in regions that hadn't in the past as widely adopted the 747 before. Why did they explore this one? Well, as we know, the Queen of the Skies program certainly faced its challenges, you'd say, in the late 1990s, stretching into the early 2000s, even maybe the 1980s. The rise of twin-engine wide bodies like the A330 over at competitor Airbus and even Boeing's own 777 certainly highlighted the way airlines' preferences were shifting. These performances saw airlines begin choosing planes that offered basically for them fewer risks and greater flexibility across their networks while being more efficient and capable of flying long distances. Meanwhile, Boeing and its beloved 747 program were not favoured by the industry's shift away from the hub-and-spoke model, favouring more point-to-point connectivity. And as a result, this shift quickly diminished the need for planes like this. For most, but not all, airlines. There was still a market for ultra-high-capacity planes, but again, it just had reduced so dramatically. Boeing was immediately under pressure to adapt, and the XQLR was part of a broader effort to revolutionise the program wherever possible to make sure that it was maintaining its competitiveness against some of the new era of planes that were coming in. During this period, Airbus emerged with conceptual aircraft and proved to be a real threat to market share at Boeing, making the plane maker need to push the boundaries where possible. Boeing hoped that offering a prospective XQLR would keep the 747 family alive and in a new way continue appealing to airlines right around the world. To achieve the proposed improvements, the plane maker would evaluate design changes, including quieter engines and structural tweaks, to really find the perfect middle ground. Ultimately, Boeing shelved the XQLR concept in favour of what would become the 7478. The Dash 8 model represented a different approach to modernising the 747, focusing more heavily on capacity and also the ability to have cargo, which really was the saving 
grace for this program if there was any to begin with. Compared to the XQLR, the Dash 8 incorporated design philosophies that were really borrowed from Boeing's next generation programs, such as the 787 Dreamliner, which was beginning to heat up as the true next generation widebody that airlines were crying out for. Looking back across the last 20 years, I think we can firmly say that the Dreamliner has done that. One of the most significant differences was the engine choice between the two aircraft. At the same time, the XQLR was expected to leverage advanced iterations, but the Dash 8 used engines derived from more modern planes. It was therefore a greater choice in terms of efficiency. The choice enabled the 7478, like I said, to be more fuel efficient than previous models. More critically, it also offered improvements necessary over conceptual designs that never saw the light of day and felt internally to make more sense. In terms of design, the 7478 featured a lengthened fuselage and updated wings with raked wingtips, delivering improved performance which Boeing had been targeting for again some time through so many other concepts but couldn't find the sweet spot. In contrast, the XQLR really focused on capacity enhancements, not as much, but more so on your range and noise reduction. The Dash 8 offered a broader proposition for airlines, but even then would ultimately fail commercially due to evolving industry trends. Despite its promising features that Boeing was ultimately quite keen on, the 747 XQLR never advanced beyond the conceptual phase. Reasons such as the industry shifting away from four-engined aircraft, even for long-haul operations, certainly did contribute to the demise of this prospective concept. The success of twin-engine models like this 777 demonstrated that airlines preferred smaller twin-engine jets with leaps in operational and cost efficiencies. While innovative, the XQLR could not overcome the disadvantages of having those four engines in an increasingly twin-engine dominated market, and this is something even the 7478 would struggle with, even though this variant did actually see the light of day. Boeing was really trying to keep the program alive, and this was during a period it was also investing heavily in the 787, which it believed would be the future of wide bodies. However, as Airbus studied an A3XX to rival Boeing's high-capacity long-haul space, the American manufacturer knew it needed to find a way to introduce a product to negate the loss in market share it had taken so long to build up and what it was scared to lose. You'd argue that that is why there was so much intensity around a 7478, even though it ended up not really being the biggest commercial success. Boeing's decision to drop the 747 XQLR with hindsight was was certainly the right one. However, it was a response undoubtedly carried over to the Dash 8, as we would still get one last iteration to the Queen of the Skies series. The 7478, though not a commercial success, did find some enjoyment in the cargo market and leveraged developments onto other wide-body aircraft to improve itself as a plane that maybe wasn't required as much as we would have thought but albeit still had some purchases. As for the XQLR, well, it was all promise and not much action. It would have likely faced, if released, the exact same challenges in gaining traction with airlines, and this was a common theme among many of the concepts that were never released in the 747 family. Because if you're new to the aviation industry, firstly, a very warm welcome. But second of all, I'd encourage you to do one thing right after this video, and that is go and have a look at all the many other 747 concepts that never released. I've taken a look at quite a few here either on the channel or across on the website, but there are great resources out there to learn more. You'll quickly see that the XQLR just was one of the many that came out but never formally released, and the program ultimately would end in the Dash 8. Those concepts never really found their footing, and today we sit with the Dash 8's production having ceased and the 747 now all but a memory. It will continue flying for some time, enjoy it while it's still around, but one day the 747 7 will no longer be in our skies. And while that is also while that is absolutely upsetting, new eras will perform and we will see new aircraft, new advancements and new planes to see our jaws drop, but they won't quite hit the same as that 747. Thanks a lot for watching. Take care, do be safe. Do you believe the XQLR was a good idea or do you think the Dash 8 was better in hindsight? Appreciate the support. Take care, do be safe and I'll see you in a couple of days for your latest industry analysis right back here on Globetrotting. And we'll